everyone welcome back today um i wanted to show you all my sewing room because i reorganized it a little bit and then i want to do kind of like a sit down just chatting with you all kind of thing um just about you know kind of the struggles of being a shop owner because i've noticed that a lot of people here and there are just struggling these days um, especially with how slow summer usually is with sales, so I know it can get a little discouraging in that way. So I kind of want to touch on that, but first I want to show you all my sewing room. Oh my gosh, I let it get so bad. Like, I could not, like, look at this floor. Before this, I could not even walk in this room. Like, it was just so bad. Um, part of it was mental health reasons like it just you know when everything just piles up and then it gets so overwhelming and you're like i can't do it well luckily my sister helped me i asked her um and she was so sweet to help me out so let's get started i just want to show you all how i organized everything so first i have this huge desk uh i got this one from amazon and unfortunately it's not my sewing desk necessarily i don't know i just couldn't really get comfortable uh, sewing on it, but it definitely helps with space and organizing different things that I have So over here, I just have some items that I'm working on and whatnot <clears throat> And they're just like, you know piled up on top of the patterns Then I have my uh, Little wax burner here. I love it. I love you know, the room just smelling nice and fresh and it's by a small shop uh, live love wax and then I have a serger here and a sewing machine since I don't use these as often I keep them here this one I use for um, gathering my fabrics and then for the little what's it called little rolled hems and then every once in a while I'll need my sewing machine but just in the back here I just have some supplies and random little things like some thank you cards some ink you know just little random things here and there uh, tape for taping my patterns and then just some miscellaneous little sewing and gadgets goodies whatnot and then down here i keep some more of those miscellaneous gadgets and doohickeys <laughs> just a lot of sewing things over here is where i keep my paper i do prefer paper patterns so i have stocked up ready to print everything there's my little mannequin off to the side and then here is where i keep some extra shipping supplies um, I'm gonna move some of these over to my shipping station, but for now, they're gonna stay right here. Over here is my actual sewing corner, like, this is where I'm going to be sewing. I don't know, for me, I just really need to, you know, be focused and whatnot. So I really like this, and I, fa I used to have this desk facing the window, but I moved it because sometimes <laughs> when I'm wearing my headphones, I can't hear whenever my daughter comes in, like, randomly, it'll be, like, 2 a.m., and she walks in, she'll scare me as I'm sewing, and I don't want to, like, sew over a finger or anything. It hasn't happened, but, you know, anxiety, so I was thinking that, that might happen, and then I'm like, oh, okay, better not. <laughs> so here is my main serger. I'm actually going to switch this one with my, uh, what's it called? With my brother, I don't know, I just prefer the brother over the Juki. I've given it months and months of trying to love it, but it's just not love for me. And then I have my little brother cover stitch. I actually have a new one that I want to unbox over here. It's just sitting there. That's my trash. Hi, trash. Um, because this one, obviously I use it to hem, but I want one for my, what's it called? My little... My binding attachment, that's what I meant. So I want one for binding and I want one for hemming. And then I might get, um, what's it called? An industrial serger. I really want to try an industrial one just because I'm all about noise reduction. I don't know. Even with my, my noise canceling headphones on, I still hear it and it bothers me. And I know it bothers everybody in my house because I'm sewing until like 5 a.m. every day. But anyways, look at this, y'all. Okay, hear me. I feel like I'm never going to sew through all of this. Wait, let me face the ring light. So I actually had an idea of maybe doing like a live video on YouTube where I sell the fabric. But I want to do it where I'm just like weigh it. I don't know if that makes sense. Like I'll figure out like a generic price per weight and then just like pull something out and be like, if you want this whole thing, it weighs this much and then figure out a price. You know, because ugh, I just don't really want to go through measure all the yards like 
That sounds so daunting. But anyways, yes, I moved it over here. I used to have, like, this really ugly um, bed. What is it called? Mattress thing. And then we finally moved it to the garage. And now I have this whole wall of fabric. Just lots of goodies, lots of things that I'm... I swear, I feel like I'm never going to sew through. So I want to do... I want to sell as, mo as much of it as I can. This is my favorite corner over here. Because it holds all of my mesh fabrics look at this i am still going to do my little mesh course i just decided to take more time off for my mental health so that's where we're at oh and then i have some more shipping bags here i do have a video of like all my shipping supplies if you're interested so you can see like where to get like custom stuff like that and then i have some shipping goodies in here um under here actually see all these little goodies for packages and whatnot and then what's in here oh here's all my thread and some what is that <laughs> i'm sorry i forget so many words and my elastic and then this is my favorite little section right here the shipping area it is midnight right now while i'm exposing myself but yeah i have my little label printer and then i have my hand sanitizer because you know once you're packaging, you really want everything to be sanitary. I mean, just in general, I like to be sanitary, but... And I have some extra shipping labels in the back here. And then finally over here, again, there's my trash. I finally freed up this uh, little closet. This other section is just empty, so I only have this side open. And again, just some more extra fabrics. That box is full of fabrics. That box is full of some ready-to-ship items. I'm losing my breath already but anyways now i'm going to sit down with y'all and just have a heart to heart a one-on-one -on -one if you must okay so now we're gonna have a heart to heart and if you can't tell i've been crying it's because i filmed like i feel i already filmed this part but then i realized that i was mumbling too much <laughs> so anyways we're back um in this part i just kind of want to Tell you a little bit about my experience um, with the shop and kind of talk about, you know, the highs and the lows that no one ever really talks about. I mean, not that there's that many YouTubers like that are in the small shop world, but I feel like it's important to tell you my experience so that if anyone is facing something similar, that you don't feel alone and you don't feel like you're the only one going through it because honestly i think this business is one of the hardest ones to get into and to be doing because we literally have all these hats and all these pressures on us at all times that it can get really hard so i kind of want to talk about what i have been going through the past few months ish so, for the longest time um, in my shop, I've just kind of been chugging along, and I've just been chugging along safely, like I never really wanted to take a risk and really grow, if that makes sense. Like, I've always been afraid of like, oh, what if people are mad at me because they can't score these items, or like, what if I get too many people and then um, I'm not able to fulfill their orders, you know, I just always had this like anxiety about growing my shop because it has been kind of like I mentioned, my little safe zone for a while where I knew like, oh, you know, like no one's ever gonna be upset with me because I'm just, you know, taking on a little by little and that sort of thing. And then around January of this year, which is crazy that it happened all so fast, is when I said enough is enough. I'm just gonna go for it like I don't care about closing down my orders anymore I'm just gonna see you know like how many orders can I get <laughs> which is crazy to think about because normally um, I would take on like 30 to 40 orders and be like okay that's it you know that's all I can do but this January I was really like I want everyone to order and then I'll figure it out <laughs> once I <laughs> once I get the orders um, and yeah, I, I feel like I low-key manifested it in a way, but it was really just more so that I was ready for it, you know, I was unafraid now 
at that point. And that's what I made one of my older videos of like my biggest drop to date and it was like a hundred orders and that was mind blowing. And I <laughs> I think I still could have gotten like more not to brag but it was still like okay I'm, I still kinda had to close it down because a hundred orders is a lot. Like for one person, holy cow. So then um I did that drop and slowly but surely, you know, my my shop was popping <laughs> like it was really crazy for me like i hadn't been so scared to reach that point and then once i was there i was like this is not bad like i'm killing it pretty much and i was doing it with no help like no reps no nothing it was literally just me pouring my heart and soul into this business and I'm not gonna lie i was feeling like a big shot yeah yeah but i mean that in the most humble way because like i mentioned you know it did take a lot of work and a lot of dedication and good work ethic and good customer service and you know a lot of sacrifices in terms of you know like not having a social life uh, having like my mom help with my daughter and things like that so it did come with a lot of sacrifices <laughs> But the high felt so good that I kind of ignored all of those little things that would slowly but surely um, lead to the downfall. <laughs> so, I'm um, sorry, I like to cope with humor, so I'm going to laugh even though I want to cry. Um, so anyways, around um, this time I was, you know, slowly but surely sticking to 100 orders per drop. And that's that. And I was able to really fulfill them by myself even though looking back I was working non-stop like I kind of became obsessed hyper focused on my orders and everything else was kind of on the back burner which again looking back now was terrible for me mentally um but anyway then um around so then I stopped but yeah I took a lot of orders January February took Fe January and February, took March off, and then went back at it in April, and April was like my biggest month ever, and then May was my biggest month ever again, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know, again, I will admit, I was feeling myself like, hey, you're doing it, you're reaching your dreams, like, you're gonna need to hire seamstresses now, like, this is where you've been wanting to be this whole time, you know, so I was finally thank you baby jesus um but anyways so then around that time um i was still you know working non-stop or whatever and then i kind of reached a point where i was like wait a second this is all um almost too good to be true or now that i'm looking back like i should have definitely um slowed things down a bit but again i was ready to unapologetically unapologetic unapologetic unapologetically <laughs> i cannot say that word and um without fear like i was i was being brave and like really going for it right like i literally went full force zero to a hundred and sorry my boogers are all messy um i'm trying to find something to wipe with hold on okay and then that's where I felt like I finally reached the top, but the top was so lonely. There's a song that <clears throat> that I love, and there's rap, this rapper that I love. I just love rap music, but there's this rapper, MF, and he always says, The sales can rise, but it doesn't mean much, though, when your health declines. He's talking about mental health, like, he's been, like, super famous, selling out concerts, literally his dreams achieved, and he felt like shit. And that's where I was, <clears throat> that's where I was at. Like, literally, dreams achieved, I've hired on, it wasn't single moms that I hired on, like, my dream has always been to hire other single moms like myself, but I've hired on other moms, like, I'm breaking in money. <laughs> But that's so funny. I'm like raking in the cash, you know, I like bought my car. I'm like, I'm like, um, what's it called? 
I can order Postmates every single day, which has always been a dream of mine. Like, that sounds so silly, but I love ordering out. And to be able to afford to order out five meals a day, ten meals a day, like, that was the dream. Anyways, um, I swear I'm not bragging, but my dreams were achieved, is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, But I got to a point where I realized that as much as that was where I wanted to be, it wasn't really fulfilling in any way, shape, or form. Because it drew me away from family time, it drew me away from uh, just, you know, my self-care, it drew me away from just reality, you know, like, because for a while I was kind of trying to push it aside and be like, no, this is what I want, like, I should be happy. But ultimately, I was not happy, and this is where I want to put a little trigger warning for, um, what's it called for um for uh depression suicidal thoughts self-harm all of that because it got to the point where i wasn't showering i wasn't eating i was sleeping all day and then working on orders like all my orders were still being worked on miraculously but um then i was depressed I was depressed, and for me, my self-harm is, it sounds so weird, but it's not brushing my teeth. I purposely won't brush my teeth, because I know that that will lead to gum disease, and I know that gum disease can lead to heart failure, and that's what I want. (sighs) That's honestly what I wanted, but that's what I was hoping for. I got so bad that that's what I was hoping would happen. Like one day I'll just have a heart attack and die. (laughs) Again, sorry, I laugh. It's a coping mechanism. But anyways, so once I realized that that's where I was at, I decided to take more time off. Even though all my orders were like figured out, I had raised money people. I do corporate turnouts, I would have raised money people. I, I basically figured everything out in my shop but me myself and I was left to just crumble and everything like that so that's why I took off more time for my shop than I needed to or not that I needed to but I said I needed to take that time off and that's why I haven't been uploading um my YouTube videos And I don't, I don't want anyone to worry about me now. Like, now we're on the uphill. <laughs> um, but I'm telling you this story because I don't want anyone to go through the same thing. So if you can take anything from this video, it's that whatever your dreams for your shop are, make sure that you still have time for your loved ones and for yourself. Because that's where, that's where I, that's what I failed to realize, is that I had these dreams, but in order to get those dreams, the sacrifices were too much for me. Like, not even being able to wake up, even though your toddler is calling on you. That's where I was at. But anyways, um, sorry, I like haven't processed this apparently. <laughs> um, but I promise I'm on, I'm on the uphill now. I'm brushing my teeth again. <laughs> I'm showering. I'm eating all those good stuff. I'm taking my daughter out to the park. Like everything's better now. Um. But yeah, so if I have any advice to give, it's just really think about what it is that you're asking for. Uh, Because it's not worth it most of the time. Like, you know, there's, like I mentioned, that famous rapper. It happens to a lot of people. Once they reach those dreams, 
it's like, why was I even working so hard for this? So now I'm at the point where I'm gonna be happy with just having some side money. <laughs> because luckily I don't rely on my shop for, um, to sustain me, you know what I mean? It's more like, because I live with my parents and they, um, well, we're Mexican, so it's not really expected of me to pay them back or anything, or pay for bills, or pay for the rent, or nothing. Like, they don't ask anything of me except to try and be, you know, happy. <laughs> so yeah, luckily, I don't need the money. Um, but if you're someone who does need the money, hire help early on. Um, because your time with your family is worth a lot more. Hire a babysitter if that's what you need, but don't overwork yourself. It's it's not glamorous at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're back on track now. I'm going to make videos whenever I feel like it, now when I feel obliged to. I'm going to do drops whenever I feel like it, now when I feel obliged to. Um, so yeah, I've also learned, like, I don't owe people anything. Like, I always thought, like, if I'm not doing drops, then people are gonna get mad at me. <laughs> or, like, if I'm not always available for custom orders, people are gonna be mad at me. But that's, that's far from the truth. Like, if anything, you can't expect to, you know, spread yourself so thin. But anyways, hopefully... That resonated with somebody i mean literally if this all helps one person to kind of rethink what they're doing then that's enough for me um so yeah i'll catch you all in the next video bye